channel because I wasn't always this way. Rise of the I didn't grow up in some environment where we were going to church all the time. I was re reading the Bible and studying all that stuff. And then uh, and then that's how, you know, why it turned out this way. That's not true at all. So it just wasn't. It was mostly television, video games, and, and just a typical, you know, American lifestyle of, of uh, how a kid would grow up like that. But anyways, growing up, uh, you know, I, so I didn't really have that. And then my parents were divorced when I was seven years old. So... That would affect things too, but then I there was a um, a change that happened when I was in second grade. I uh, had to get glasses, and then uh, that was significant because when I went to school, uh, kids were very mean. This is one of the first memories I, I have, is that children were very mean. They were even mean before that in kindergarten, and I just make fun of something. You know, I made a drawing, and some kid made fun of it, and. Uh, but then when I had the glasses, you know, they call me names, four eyes, and stuff like that. And kids just get, um, I was bullied a lot. Uh, the way that I dressed, too. The glasses and all the stuff, I wasn't considered cool. And so I was bullied, called names, four eyed, a bunch of names I won't mention here. <laughs> I was physically beat up, stuff like that. By, uh, and also bullied, too, not just by... Uh, boys also by girls too. So little girls can be pretty mean too. They said some very very nasty things to me um, And so that affected me the reason I say that is it affected me deeply and uh, eventually created a lot of depression and an anger too in me uh, which you know came out more when I was older but you know so I had a lot of that and growing up when I was a little kid, all before, you know, middle school, all the way through elementary school, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, the friends I did have were, were outcasts. I was an outcast. And I spent spent a lot of time by myself. Sometimes I would zone out, you know, for hours with books or something I'd be doing and spend time by myself or out in the woods and stuff. And 12, 13 years old, what happened was I got rid of my glasses. And I was able to get contacts. Uh, you know, I had a bowl cut. I got rid of the bowl cut and I, I had spiky hair. I changed my clothes. I started dressing more, you know, like the world, like the other kids. Um, and, you know, at, at that time I started getting into uh, heavier music. It, back then in the 90s it was uh, new metal, but then it got heavier and heavier later on. You know, because I started out with corn and all those types of bands and it got heavier as things went on and like I said I got it starting getting into heavy music there which became a huge thing part of my life was the music and and, and I identified with that uh, angry music okay and it is pure pure anger pure anger and depression too a lot of a lot of sad stuff but I identified with that I was addicted to it and so as time went on uh, eventually I got involved in being in a, a band and uh, I was 15 years old when I first became a, a singer. I had no idea what I was doing, but some some kids in high school had a band, 
and they they asked me if I wanted to come try out to be a singer. They need to be a singer. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I liked stuff. I liked, like I said, the the, the new metal stuff, the corn and Deftones and and uh, System of a Down and all that stuff. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a whirl. So I went down there, and they're like, here, do the, learn this cover of this song, right, Deftone song. So I did that, and I just went down there and yelled and <laughs> did the best I could. It was pretty bad, but I kept practicing. And then I got addicted to that. I was in that band for a while. And then, you know, after I left that band, and then I joined another band. And that was more, uh, it got heavier. And that was like... Uh, more like a melodic hardcore band and, and it kept going and going as time went on and I was in bands singing for bands as a vocalist uh, all the way until I was 23 years old and so then I get to high school and you know up until that point I had avoided drugs and alcohol those types of things but um, by the time I was 16 years old that's when I started drinking started smoking weed those types of things and uh you know that's when things definitely I, I started you know you're opening up more doors that way things started accelerating but i had the depression and the anger and you know when i started getting in the bands this is something that i use this is important because it's something that i used as an outlet to get out my uh anger and my depression it was like a catharsis to get that out writing about it and then screaming about it singing about it it was a way to get it out uh, the problem is is that you get that out feels good but then you know those feelings come back you got to do it again and it becomes in it honestly that you know this is something you got to understand music is like a drug um, music even just listening to music is like a drug the way it makes you feel you, just singing with along with it um, but when here's the thing though people don't understand when you're in a band, especially if you're a singer, it's a whole other ball game. It's not the same as just listening to music, okay? It, you are involved in creating it, and there's a different level of getting it out of your system. And so that that was extremely addictive uh, when it comes to the music. But um, yeah, and you know, the music thing, that that just went I kept going from band to band and the music thing uh, just to finish up with the music thing before I get into the spiritual things that happened when I was 17 you know I kept going it kept getting heavier and heavier right you start I start off with new metal and then back in the day even this before the days of the internet or when the internet first began like you did there wasn't all these places to find bands and stuff all I knew was what was from the radio but then I had a friend in high school who took me to a Kill Switch Engage show and there was this whole other world that I found about, you know, metalcore and hardcore. And so it went to the metalcore, hardcore, and then it got heavier and grindcore. Then I got into death metal and and then it got heavier and heavier, guttural, slam, gore grind. And I mean, every subgenre of metal you could think of. And, and, and it you know, and it wasn't just deathcore is one thing that became trendy. I was into that, but I, I was into real heavy death metal. And, and just so in case anyone's watching who's a metalhead, I'm talking suffocation, death, obituary, dying fetus, uh, cryptopsy. I mean, all the old school classic death metal bands, guttural slam, abominable putridity, all that stuff. I mean, I absolutely love this stuff. Metal was my life. Absolutely 100% metalhead to the bone. Loved it. You know, and there's a transformation too when you're in the uh, metal scene. Like, you, um, it's there's so much power to it. And you go to a metal show. I went to tons of shows, and uh, you know, since I lived in Mass, I was I was at the epicenter of metal, in my opinion, in this country because we had the New England Metal and Hardcore Fest, and I would go drive down to the Worcester Palladium all the time. Every weekend that I could, I'd go see bands, i go to shows, i go to the New England Metal and Hardcore Festival. i go to shows by myself all the time. I was crazy. I went to Slayer by myself, Slayer and uh, Soulfly. And uh, Soulfly, that's another thing. That's another crazy thing to talk about, and this is a spiritual thing, I think, too. They had, you know, they would do a part of the uh, show where they, they integrated, you know, a, a lot of uh, other types of drumming, like... Uh, the bongos and congas and all that type of stuff and they would do one part of the show where they'd stop all the guitars 
and then they would just do all drums. And there was an actual mosh pit with just drums because it's connected to, if you don't understand the power of, of drums and, and the rhythm, this goes back for thousands of years. You can look at all these na ancient native cultures. They use drumming to contact the spirits. They do it when they're getting hyped up for warfare and it's the driving beat of those jungle drums. And, and it's in voodoo, it's in other cultures and you just, you get those beats going, going and, and, and people get into a trance state and, the, and they get, and they get the, they feel the energy from it. And it's like the, uh, they and they have that vibe where they have these ancient warrior masks from uh, and Zulu masks and, and stuff from Brazil and all that stuff and you could see all you know, this tribal beats and, and, and warfare and in contact in the spirits it's all like connected together and I, I was tapped into that and we were all were tapped into that and so you could see and I saw the absolute power of the music even just the drums was hugely powerful like I said, it's like a drug. You get addicted to it. And you keep coming back for more and more. And it's so powerful too. And you have such an adrenaline dump that when you're at these shows, some super heavy stuff is playing. You have such an adrenaline dump that, you know, people are pushing each other. They're punching and kicking in the air. Sometimes they punch and kick the, each other. I've gotten punched in the face. I've gotten elbowed in the no, nose by 300 pound men. Uh, bleeding out of both nostrils. They've gotten donkey kicked in the gut and got the wind knocked out of me. Uh, I've gotten knocked on the ground, punched in the jaw, almost broke my jaw. But you laugh about it. And you don't even barely feel the pain. Feel the pain. And you get back up and you and you, you yell and you, you laugh about it. And you're jumping and you're crowd surfing and, and none of it matters. You, don't, you barely feel anything. And then what was even crazier too is you have, and then you feel the power when you're on the stage. There's nothing that compares to that. If you're a band on stage in, in, in the metal scene, and you can look out at a crowd and the music that you're playing is making everyone headbang and, and mosh and, and push each other and, and fight, whatever, swing their arms and stuff and, and fists. There's a lot of power in that. And then if you're the singer even more, you are in command of a crowd. You tell them to raise their hands, they'll raise their hands. You tell them, let's, you know, open up this pit, get ready for this, this is your last chance, destroy this place, wall to wall, all this type of stuff, and they do what you say. You don't understand what that power feels like unless you've experienced it. And uh, there is a very, it's a, a very um, addicting power. And so uh, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing at all. I'm just saying what it is. And so you want that more and more and you want bigger shows and bigger crowds. And when in metal too, you want people to be more violent. And the more violent they are, the better. One thing was someone that was close to me got involved in some um, some some group that was teaching false things, right? And I didn't know really at the time. And they said I could come check it out. So I went to go check it out. I went to their study. And they were doing some very strange things. They taught some strange things. I didn't really know anything because I didn't know the Bible. But after I left, I felt really bothered by it. And I said, there's something wrong with this. So basically what it did was it made me to study the Bible for myself. And I started studying it and I started finding out evidence that yes, some of these things that they taught were false and I found verses disproving it. And I, and I started collecting those and collecting those. Meanwhile, this is all starting to work on my heart. Then combined with the fact that I was studying this stuff about conspiracy, the new world order, and they kept coming across the Christian perspective that was showing, hey, all this is foretold in the book of Revelation and prophecies showing there would be a one world system and, and all this stuff. And this is all fulfilling that. Go back to the metal thing for a second. I was in the, uh, this band and we were playing shows everywhere. We went on tours out of state and stuff. And then I got to the point where I got sick and tired of, their, uh, of stuff and people not helping out moving equipment and stuff. And, just a bunch of drama. I was sick and tired of it. So I quit the band. And then after that, it was, you know, um, 
it was kind of a succession of, of things. Combine that with the studying of those verses, comparing to those things, uh, the conspiracy stuff and seeing the prophecy. And, and then basically, I started to see some verses that were convicting of me because, you know, I consider myself some type of Christian, right? I was like a false convert. But I saw verses like, He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And I saw in Romans chapter 6, it says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we continue in sin? How shall we that are dead to sin can continue any longer therein? And, and shall we sin um, because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. You know, so it was about this, this issue of calling yourself a Christian but still continuing to live a life of sin that was my problem you know I could believe in my head all these things yeah I believe Jesus yeah I believe he died for his sins I believe in God all that stuff I'm against the devil but I'm still gonna do what I want I'm gonna live my life how I want I'm still gonna do the metal I'm still gonna get drunk I'm still gonna go here and do that I'm still filled with anger and depression and living in sin but hey, I believe all these things in my head, so whatever. And that's supposed to be good enough. It wasn't good enough. And so basically what happened was, what finally pushed me over the edge was, uh, I have, I've had this book on spiritual warfare, which by, there are some things that I would definitely disagree with in this book, but it doesn't matter. God can use even just a tract, even a couple verses. And so one thing that God used out of this book was that, it was talking about, you know, if you have sin in your life, it opens you up, gives legal ground for the devil to attack you. And so I started looking through this list of sin and, and I'm just, I see that I'm guilty of a lot. And it started to really, really hit me. I started to be convicted. And um, so what happened was I was like, well, I need to confess this. So I got down on my knees the side of my bed. I started trying to convict it and I couldn't even finish reading. And I started weeping. I started crying, broke down. God broke my heart. I started weeping over my sin, crying. And I knew I had a bigger problem than just a couple sins I needed to confess. I was lost. I was I was I was a fake. I wasn't I wasn't saved. So I was weeping over my sin and I knew I didn't want to live that life anymore. I was sick and tired of it. And you know, I, after I'd quit the band, I tried to hang out with the, the people a few more times and I just started to see the vanity too of, of this world and, and uh, how people, once you start, you know, you're not in with the right crowd or something like that and people turn on you and it's just very shallow and it's all based around partying and stuff whether people hang out with you or anything and it was starting to wear on me and I was sick and tired of it. sick and tired of this world sick and tired of all that stuff sick and tired of my sin and so I that day is, is when God saved me I repented I turned to Jesus Christ and I knew that that was that was it everything was going to change after that and that's what happened and I was born again that day, and what happened after that was I tried uh, drinking alcohol after that. This was in 2009, summer of 2009. I was uh, 23 years old. Tried drinking alcohol after that. I didn't even like it anymore. And so that was it. I was done. Uh, tried going to a couple more metal shows, and then that eventually went away. I started studying that a little bit more, too. And I tried to hold on to it for a little bit and, and, and try to cut out everything that had overtly, you know, bad lyrics, evil lyrics. I was like, oh, I'll just cut out all that stuff. Then I wanted to use it sort of like a Christian metal thing. And then eventually I started studying that and I was like, you know what, I can't justify this. I can't justify this angry music where when you play it, people punch each other in the face and they get laid out flat and people with bloody noses. I've seen girls laid out flat, knocked out on a floor at shows. If you think that's something that God wants with your music that you think you can use for God, you're out of your mind. It's ridiculous. 
But anyways, you can't use it. I saw you can't use that. The Bible talks about when you're you're born again that you're to put away anger and wrath and, and all these emotions that are intrinsically tied together with angry music, metal music. It's pure raw anger, and you cannot try to fool me. I was a metal die-hard metalhead of metalheads, and for the first time in my life, when I was saved, I felt peace. And God took away that uncontrollable anger and that depression. Because I knew that I had found the truth. I finally had peace for the first time in my life. I felt love for the first time in my life. I wasn't able to love anyone before that. And now I wanted to tell complete strangers about the gospel who I never even met. I had a, I had a, some type of care. I cared about them for some reason, you know. And um, it was a complete transformation. And and right after that, I was addicted to studying the Word of God. I just wanted to read it. I wanted to study it. I started doing all these word searches through the Bible and doing these long studies. And and I was just it engulfed my life. And I've never been same, the same since. And now you see me today. Here I am. And he, you know, the Bible says he uh, turning us from the power of Satan unto God. That's what happened. He, God pulled me out of the Satan's, out of Satan's grip. And turned me away from that, that power of darkness. I gave up that power through the metal over the crowds to serve Jesus turned away from the power of Satan unto God and that's who I serve now and I know that I do and I know because of the Word of God and I hope that he uses this this testimony to reach a lot of people to uh, to show you that you know God can save anyone and that maybe if you maybe if you are stuck in some of this stuff uh, that God's trying to tell you it's time for you to get out. You know, you say, oh, what's the big deal about the metal and stuff? Oh, I just told you. The anger, the hate. You can't, you cannot be right with God if you're filled with anger and hate. You can't. You cannot be right with God. So I want you to think about that. And, but he has the power to change everything. You might say, oh man, I can't imagine quitting any of those things. Okay, I understand. That's because you're dead in sin. That's why. But when you are saved, it has nothing to do with going to church and trying to follow a bunch of rules and trying to do a bunch of things that you don't want to do in order to change. It's not what it is. It's a supernatural transformation. That's what it is. It's called being born again. That's what it means. To be born again means to be super, supernaturally transformed by God from who you are now into a new person. You know, I'm not the same man that I used to be in the past. I was changed by God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Jesus said, you must be born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't. You have to be born again. And how do you? How are you born again? Uh, Acts 20, 21 says, Repentance toward God and faith through the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent means... You're sorry for your life of, and re, of sin and rebellion against God. You're sorry for it. You hate it. You want nothing to do with it anymore. You want to forsake it. Turn your back on it. And you turn from that life of sin to Jesus. And you say, Jesus, you want him to save you. You believe he died for your sin. He took the punishment for, that you deserve. He died in your place. He shed his blood for you. He was buried. He rose again from the dead. You believe that fact from the scriptures... You put your faith in him, you put your full trust in him, you'll be saved at that moment. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You 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 call cry out to God, say, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Ask him to forgive you, to save you, and he will. You'll be transformed, you'll be born again, and you'll never be the same. And you have the gift of eternal life. So I urge you, 
to do that before it's too late. Don't try to, to uh, put it off for another day. Don't delay the, you know, uh, thinking you're going to repent of your deathbed. You could die the day before. And don't think that you're too far gone and too much in deep darkness. God can pull you out of it. And uh, I hope that you would. And if you have any questions or you need any help, just send me an email, treadingserpents at hotmail.com. Get in contact with me and I can talk to you. Alrighty. So, I guess that's it. Thank you for listening to the testimony and I hope that uh, all the glory goes to God and I hope that it's uh, a blessing to many people. Thank you. Have a good day.